So maybe, just maybe, Trump knows something that I don't this time. Good. Well, I just have a couple questions for you. I guess sure. I'll start out with my first one. Let's see. Do you think any of Trump's appointees will put up roadblocks for his agenda, specifically Marco Rubio? Maybe. I don't know. It's a 50-50 toss-up. So I'll say this. In general, the agenda that Trump set forth and the people that he's appointed, I'm very pleased with. I'm more optimistic with them than I expected that I would be. That's in totality. I also know that it's just reality that he was going to appoint people that I didn't like. Marco Rubio would be one of them. Uh, Stefanik would be another that I would put in that category of people that I wouldn't want touching sort of our foreign policy in any way. Um, now, will Rubio then go out of his way like a John Bolton to sabotage Trump's agenda? Well, two points on that. One, well, what is Trump's agenda? I falsely assume I think that Trump thinks what I think on foreign policy. I don't know that that's true. Maybe Trump does think we want to continue to give Israel money. Maybe Trump does think we want to continue to give Ukraine money. So in that sense, would Marco Rubio be sabotaging him if he was doing things like that, even though it's things that I would disagree with? No. Maybe that's why Trump picked them. Or maybe Trump picked them because he wanted someone that was hawkish, like he said about John Bolton, so that it would sort of be fearful to our hostile enemies. Listen, we still have people here that are willing to go to war, and so we want these sorts of people here. That could be why it was there. Uh, a point that I saw someone make that I think is actually brilliant is, when you see the appointments that Trump made, it actually was a coalition type of appointment. So... When you think of who it was that Trump got him on board to vote for him, you had MAGA people. Well, MAGA people are getting what they want with like Musk and Vivek and people like that. Then you had people that were maybe not necessarily MAGA, but they were heavily concerned about the border. You got Tom Homan. Then you have like establishment Republican people and you get Stefanik and Rubio. Then you had like, the sort of progressive people that were fed up. You get RFK. So it does look like a coalition, and I guess you do have to say there were establishment like Republican people that voted for Trump, and they're going to feel like they want some sort of seat at the table. So maybe Rubio is a gift to them. I'll say this specifically about Rubio. I think that he was terrible in calling for funding to go to Ukraine over and over again. However, I do believe the last round of funding that was voted on to send to Ukraine, he was against, which is a positive sign. Maybe he thinks enough is enough at this point. I don't know. So ultimately, I guess it comes down to what is Trump's agenda? And if Rubio is antithetical to what Trump really wants, will there be enough good people surrounding Trump this time that will be able to stop one agent or one agency sabotaging him. I hope so. But we'll have to see. I don't like the appointment at all, if I'm honest, though. Now, can he fire these people? Yeah. That he's appointing? Yeah, I think that he's allowed to remove anyone that he wants. Um, I do believe. I don't think there's a problem with that. So he theoretically could. Like, he, they got rid of Jeff Sessions. Uh, they got rid of other people. So I think he would be allowed to do that. Uh, so we'll we'll, we'll see what happens there, but I don't know. Like, uh, again, I'm not, I, it's, it's difficult for me because I have, I'm of two minds of this. I think the people that are looking, screw the Democrats that were okay with the lawfare against Trump and I don't give a shit about them, but the people particularly that are Trump supporters have every right to look at these appointments, each one of them and say, I like this. I don't like this. And now is a good time to say, this is what we need to be worried about. But then I also see it going way overboard. It's like Trump could have appointed like some of these Trump supporters, you could have been like, okay, to all of the cabinet positions, give me your list of exactly who you could want. And Trump could have done all of them except one. And these people would be like, fuck, this sucks. Trump's selling out. Oh my God, it's going to be terrible. It's like, eh, I'm not going to get that heated about it now. No, it may come back to bite us in the ass. It absolutely could. But for now, I'm like, Trump's campaign ran quite smoothly. They won. I didn't think they would win. 
They faced an incredible uphill battle, and they were talented enough that they won. He set an agenda where the things that I claimed that I wanted most, rooting out corruption at places like the FBI, at least he's talking about it. He seems to try to be appointing people that would be likely to do something like that. So I'm not going to freak out because he appointed Marco Rubio. Uh, that's that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I don't think one person on his you know cabinet could really make that big of a difference. It could. It, it certainly could. It's just at this point, I mean, the other thing to remember is, I mean, we're in November 15th. The election was last Tuesday. <laughs> and like, so we're already like, we're already delved into this stuff. Like, like. Take a breath. Like, things are going remarkably positive directionally. He won. Like, a lot of the agenda he's setting, I think, is what most MAGA people want. A lot of the appointments are what most MAGA people would want. So maybe, just maybe, Trump knows something that I don't this time. Uh, So, again, as soon as first time that Trump's like, yeah, talk to Marco Rubio and we're going to bomb the shit out of Iraq, I'm going to be like, what? What is this shit? No. No. Right? That's what I'll do. I'll criticize it. But I'm not going to jump the gun on it right now, um, as far as I'm concerned. So which are your which are your favorite Trump appointees so far? And which people, if any, that are in the Congress or Senate that you would like for him to appoint for certain positions? Uh, well, I think Homan, it, <laughs> Homan in charge of the security, given that he seems like he's been beating the drum on this for years, I think that that's probably the best pick as far as someone who will skillfully uh, achieve what needs to be done. Also, Homan signifies to me that he's not going to listen to crocodile tears because you have to understand once, once we start deporting people, that will be the mainstream media story. Every here's Johnny Smith and his dad was deported. And Oh my God, look at how he's bawling. So you need someone there. That's going to be like tough shit. Then we'll deport the kid too. So (laughs) good, good deal there for Homan, you know, I think RFK is a great appointment for two reasons. One, that I think that he shouldn't have stabbed RFK in the back. Probably RFK is a significant reason that Trump won. I think him coming on board with Trump's team as sort of someone who comes from more of a traditional left-wing perspective but also is distrusting of our institutions, I think that that's a good pick in that sense, that it was fair. And I also think that that's the best chance that we'll see accountability for COVID. So I think that that is a tremendous pick. Uh, and I'm very happy with RFK being there. Uh, I like the Matt Gates pick. Now, I think you could have picked someone better, like Ken Paxton, who's the AG out of Texas. That would have probably been someone that I would have been looking at for AG. But with the Gates, the reason that I like the Gates pick, I don't, it's not because of him personally. It's because he represents someone that's going to go in there and be pissed off with a chip on his shoulder and say, we're getting to the bottom of this shit. Uh, and that's exactly what needs to happen. Uh Mark Marcus Uno says reasoning loyalty. That's how MAGA operates. Yep, absolutely. Let me let me be quite clear, uh, Marcus Uno. I'll, I would absolutely I would have accepted Donald Trump appointing people that had no fucking clue about any of these agencies that were loyal to him, rather than anyone who had any base knowledge that there was a question of loyalty. Yep, one hundred percent. Yep, that's absolutely the. You nailed it, Marcus Uno. Wow, you're so smart, and you think that that's a negative. When we saw the first administration of Trump, he was constantly sabotaged by people within his own party and his own cabinet over and over and over. Constant leaks, constant working with agencies like the FBI to investigate him, including illegally spying on his team. Over and over and over, to the point where his own generals lied to him when he tried to withdraw troops from Syria. Yep, so the number one criteria absolutely needs to be, I want people I could trust. Now, no one had a problem when Joe Biden did that, or when Barack Obama did that, when he had his wingman Eric Holder appointed to his AG. No one gave a shit that loyalty was the number one thing that he was looking for. So I don't give a fuck what someone like you says, Marcus Uno. Yep, absolutely 100%. Yep, that's what he should have, people loyal to him. He could have pointed... He could have appointed Elon Musk or RFK to attorney general. And you would say, what qualifications do they have to be attorney general? Well, they're loyal. Good enough for me. Yep. That's better than what he did the first time. So absolutely fine with that. When you're going against such a powerful institution as these establishment institutions that are deep state, that are so corrupt that they've already showed that they'll be willing to break the law to go after you in any way, shape, or form. Yep. You absolutely need people that are loyal to you. Great. Do we, we answer that question, Marco Zuno? Good deal. So, uh, but, the, you know, so, yeah, there were, and there are other, I don't have the list in front of me. That's just off the top of my head of the cabinet picks that I like. Uh, but, yeah, that's, 
those are some of the ones I like. I like anyone that seems like that they will go in there and they'll actually do something that's to hold accountable these institutions that were so damaging to us. You know, um, we forget that the Biden administration demanded that every person at DOJ that Trump put in there resign when they came in within a month of it. Uh, I wanted to read this one thing. Hans Maschnick tweeted out, and I think this is absolutely spot on. If you didn't want Pete Hegseth as Secretary of Defense, you shouldn't have created a DEI military. If you didn't want Matt Gates to be Attorney General, you shouldn't have lied about Russia collusion. If you didn't want Tulsi Gabbard to be Director of National Intelligence, you shouldn't have written a fraudulent letter about Hunter Biden's laptop. If you didn't want Robert Kennedy to be Secretary of Health and Human Services, you shouldn't have covered up the origin of COVID. Yep. Yep, that's exactly the truth. That's what's going on. So...